G'day, it's Rusty and welcome to uh, part one of a three-part video series. We've got a, a, an unboxing here for a new plasma cutter and we're going to go through the plasma cutter. We're then going to have to do the install on the plasma table and then finally the third video we'll be looking at making some test cuts with this new plasma cutter. Okay, so first of all, let's get the cover off this box. You're seeing this for the first time as I am in real life. Okay. So what we have here, let me put that to one side for a minute. I know what that is. I know what that is. Yeah. All right. Let's get this bad boy out of here. There you go. Keep your legs straight, bend your back. Okay, what we have here, this is the new Firmacut SD55. So SD stands for standard duty, 55 means it's a 55 amp uh, cutter. So this is a three phase model. Uh, if I open this up, we can... I've never done an unboxing before, so here we go. We've got more things in there. I don't know what's in that box yet, but okay. So this is okay. It's it's called an X Trafire. So it's a European design. Uh, as I said, three phase. Doesn't come with a plug. We've got to do our own our own electrics on that which is happening shortly uh, I'm gonna show you on the front All right. the front covers uh, the current adjustment this is where the torch goes this has got this uh, they have their own uh, proprietary locking mechanism for the for the torch clamp in there your workpiece goes in here around the back back we've got on off we've got air supply in we've also got the CNC port connection so this will replace the current plasma cutter that we're using and I just want to quote a few things this is some of the specs from this new one now this one has a severance cut of 30 millimeters so basically you can you can cut from the edge and and uh, cut 30 mil thick the recommended thickness is 20 mil well what we do here we, we barely cut anything up to 10 mil so I've got a, enough room enough sort of surplus requirement there it has a piercing thickness of 20 mil and the current output is 30 to 55 so with the, with the plasma cutter we have now, we sort of operate in that 27 to 40 amp range. So this will be fine. Now the interesting thing about this particular cutter is the duty cycle. Now the duty cycle of any electrical appliance talks it, it, is related to the percentage of time it can run in a 10 minute period. So let me give you the numbers for this one. So at 100% duty cycle is achieved at 41 amps. If you turn the amperage up to 50 amps, the duty cycle is 60%. And at 55 amps, it's 50%. So at 50%, that means you can run for five minutes out of 10 minutes, and then you, can, you have to stop because the duty cycle relates to how hot the, the, the unit gets. The issue I have with, the, with my current plasma cutter is it struggles with the duty cycle at the current settings that I'm using. So it has a duty cycle of 25% duty cycle at 45 amps, has a 60% duty cycle at 35 amps, and has a 100% duty cycle at 22 and a half. Now, that's okay if you're doing small jobs in terms of cut time. Now, I've been cutting some big signs lately and I had one that was 47 minutes was the cut time. So 
because of the duty cycle, I had to back the current off and I had to keep stopping the machine so it didn't trip out. Because if you get halfway through an actual cut path and the machine trips out, it's very difficult to get back to that point and then start again. So it's actually easier for me to have it cut a couple of uh, cuts and then stop it myself so that I know when I start it, it'll just go to the next, uh, the next cut path. So upgrading to a bigger machine gives me a little bit more up my sleeve in terms of being able to run at 55 amps, but I'm also looking at something that has a better duty cycle. So that's the reason we went this way. Now, the, what, what, also, what I also got with this machine was, and I'm a bit excited to see this bit too. Oh, there it is. Okay, this is the machine torch, and I also got some um, consumables as well. Now this is the manual. Oh, it's a big thick manual. Right oh. So this is the manual for the um, torch, and let me just get this box out of the way. There you go. So this is the machine torch. And I opted for the ohmic shield as well because I run the ohmic sensor on mine. So obviously it's a different brand. I've got to get different consumables. And this is the 25 foot, what's that about? Eight meters or something? Seven meters, eight meters of, of uh, cable, which goes from the, the uh, Z axis back to the machine. And Okay, that's the that's the plug on the end that goes into the into the cutter. So what I've also got here is I've, I also ordered some consumables, and these are the ah. So I've got a series of cutting tips, electrodes for that device. I've also ordered some ah oh, the separate the non ohmic the non shielded end. And I've also got a range of different electrodes, as I said, including the fine cut. The fine cut is 30 to, 30 to 40 amps, and I'm looking forward to using those because a lot of my cutting is in that 30 to 40 amp range. So uh, that's, that's what's in that part of the box. Okay, what else did we get? Ah, this is the CNC cable that goes between the, the plug on the back of the machine. This is gonna get into my plasma interface unit. Now, the MyPlasm software runs a plasma interface unit where you, the torch need the the machine needs to be told when to turn on and off the torch and also needs to record the arc voltage because the arc voltage is what we use for the um, torch height controller so they've sent me a cable with the plug both ends but I'm going to have to disconnect the plug one end and use the wiring into the terminal of the plasma interface unit okay what else do we have in here? This is the, oh, we've got an air filter as well. So a lot of those have the motor guard style of filter on the, on the back end of them. And this will be no different. Let's see if it's, whether it's the same, oh yes, it's the same style of uh, motor guard filter, which commonly called a toilet roll holder. So in there, there's a, um, a filter in there and you got your in and out connections and I don't know they actually sent me any hose maybe they haven't all right lastly in this other box we've got oh, oh there we go there's our air hose connection and we also have the earth clamp or the, the, the return clamp that goes onto the workpiece so this is the clamp that goes onto the oh, this is the clamp that goes between the uh, cutter and the workpiece and on my table I've actually got a a common grounding plate so this cable from the machine goes to a grounding plate and then I've got a lead with a magnet on it that goes to the metal I'm cutting if I'm cutting aluminium I've got a lead a set another lead which has the clamp on it so you can clamp directly onto the clamp because the magnet might stick to the alley and I've also got another cable from that common plate that goes to the side of the water bath. So if I forget to put my clamp on, I've got a return path for the plasma cutter back to the machine 
from the torch by the, the, the water bath frame. Okay, so this is my new cutter. I'm excited to, to be able to get to the next part of this, which is to mount, I've got to mount the torch because the current mount I've got on my table is for the hand torch and I've got to make a new mount. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do. Probably have a, a, ba a new base, back a new backing plate with some clamps to hold this. And it's obviously very important that the torch is, is held you know, 90 degrees to the job, plus also make sure it's not leaning in and out. So there'll be a little bit of work to do there, but uh, all right, we'll learn how to use this as we go. All right, so that's that's the unboxing bit, and and I would like to have got the the bigger machine, the the uh, 75, but the 75 drew more current than I could have in my shed. My shed's got a 35 amp feeder cable for three phase. Now this one only draws 18, but my new air compressor, my three phase air compressor draws 10 amps. So I don't want to be overloading it because the bigger machine drew 28. So I'd never have enough. So I'm not going to go and try and run new fader cable. That's going to be too expensive. So that's the brief unboxing for the new Thermacut SD55. And I'd just like to make a couple of shout outs. Uh, James from Thermacut in Sydney, in New South Wales. And also to my friend Daniel, who is actually an agent for the Thermocut machines and the consumables. So thanks Daniel for your support and for your help to get this machine here. Thanks also to James who, who I spoke to initially, but Daniel's been a friend for a while. So when I found out that he was gonna be the, 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 the rep, the local area rep for these, I was able to get on my consumables and my parts through him and I'll be able to do so in the future. Okay, so that's the, that's the part one of this video series. As I said, part two, we'll, we're gonna take the machine, put it on the table, we've gotta make a mount, we've also gotta run a new drag chain to run the cable through, so there'll be a little bit of setting up there. Uh, I will need to probably look at my air supply, also need to work out how I'm gonna, how I run this cable into my electronics, which is, I said, part two. Uh, and yeah, I hope you can stick around for the, the next part where we're gonna set it up and then the final video of this series will be actually getting to cut some stuff because I've got a job I'm waiting to do now that I was waiting for this to arrive. So I need to get this set up shortly and then we can get on to that. So if you like the video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, the subscribe button's down here. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, if you've got one of these machines, and I'd love to know how you guys are, are, are finding it. If, you've, if you use the fine cut um, consumables as well, I'd love to know how you find them as well. Um, again, it'll be a bit of a learning curve for me because my settings I've got at the moment probably won't be the same for these. These have got their own cut chart in their manual. So, so, so that's it for this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.